All right, mother truckers, welcome back to the RC Spark Studio and Project Johnson. Now, where did we last leave off? Was it the undercarriage? No, that was the second part of the build series. That looks pretty completed and solid. It's very heavy. Was it the top carousel? Yes, indeed, we had just finished on the last episode, but keeners may notice something right away. Look at the back hatch. Thank you for the, for the folks that were watching and leaving comments in the comment section. I do read them. I did see that these uh, hinges were backwards, plus I took this red hatch and I did paint it black. Now, I figured it was much better, it looks nicer, plus it gives me the full range of motion on that back hatch. And I know you're peeking inside already and some people will be like, why didn't you show me? But don't worry, all I did was place the ESCs or the electronic speed controls on their shelf. There are four speed controllers for this excavator and let me break them down for you. The one that you're looking at that has the motor connectors on the end already comes like that in the box in this kit. This is a 120 amp ESC from Hobbywing. It's brushless. This is going to be running the, uh, the hydraulic pump motor. That's the one that we saw in the last episode that's just underneath this cover here. Right to the left of it is is the uh, carousel, uh, the slew ring motor, I should say. So this is a brushed uh, ESC. That's going to be hooked into a, uh, a power block. And there are two ESCs on the bottom. They're actually identical. Each one of these down here are brushed ESCs. So there are a total of four brush or three brushed ESCs and one brushless. For the folks that are wondering, of course, don't worry, I will be going into the details of the electronics when I get there. So let me just put this cover back on. Can I do this one-handed? Haha! <laughs> so there it is. That will have to be placed back. But look, I know some of you spotted this already. This is one of the walkways that had to be painted and installed. Now, the walkways are fairly straightforward. You'll see there's two brackets down below. You can paint either side or both sides or whatever you wish. They're going to be underneath these plates. And you'll notice right by my thumbnail there, there is a round hole. And down here, another one. And then right here, another one. And at the top, another one. There are two brackets that are going to be screwed under uh, this whole walkway. And I'm going to be using a uh, very, very, very small 1.2 size nuts and 1.2 size uh, uh, bolts. And then to mount this up to the excavator itself, in the frame, they've got pre-tapped uh, 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 holes for the uh, larger 2.4 screws to go in. And you see they right there. This is so small, I couldn't believe it. When I was doing the other one, I actually ended up putting the screw right into my fingertip. And because I'm getting old and there's much callus there, I, was, I had the piece attached to me. <laughs> I couldn't even feel it. I had to unscrew it from my finger. I'm sure there's a few of you out there that have similar stories to that. Anyway, I'm going to put the brackets on this and get this mounted up right here. And for those building along with me, this is a few moments later, just so you can have a look at how those brackets are actually set up. Not too bad. It looks like they're fairly flimsy, but I got to tell you, when they're actually put on there, it's very, very sturdy. One, and then the other. And once it's on, everything should line up looking good. And as I spin it around and reveal the other side to you, same deal, connects the same way, except these pieces have three brackets each. And now you're starting to see how my color scheme is coming together. It's interesting how this is reflecting in the light a different color than this because they're both the same paint painted at the same time with the same layers. <laughs> Alrighty, masterful instruction book. What are we doing next? The main boom. All right. Uh, that looks good. That is huge. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see here. 
One of the things that they're showing in the instruction book that is already done, thankfully, are these brackets. You can see all these brackets say that they have to be installed, but they actually come pre-installed. And if you're very careful, you can actually paint it uh, without having to remove them. Now what I did was I covered the tips and all the way down, I took off all the uh, zip ties. These are ones I put on afterwards, but I covered all of the, uh, the hydraulic nipples here with tape. You guys got to expect innuendo in this show. That's, that's just the way it's going to go. <laughs> There's just no way you can hold on to a big Johnson like this and not have a lot of innuendo. Uh, and uh, so what I'm going to do here is, since all of these are here, what they're showing is for you to take and put this ram in onto the arm, you actually have to remove everything to slide that pin in. But don't be dismayed. See, if you are doing one of these and you've painted it like me, because I have built a smaller version of these, I know that you can move these out of the way. Now, these are brass lines, and I didn't paint these on the uh, smaller version, the Kabelko that I did, which is actually a Komatsu. Um, um, but regardless, I'm still going to show you, because you can slide the pin in through that ram just by moving these. But you have to make sure, and they show you right in the book here, to go back in and put those zip ties, they actually made these circles here, at these points when you're done, because you don't want any of the hydraulic lines being bent or kinked or anything like that. So that's something to look out for. All of this is already done. This is all pre-done when it came here. Now here are the beautiful pieces that are left to assemble. All laid out, nice and orderly. If you do this in a methodical fashion, not only will you have a great looking machine, but you'll also be able to make your lives a whole lot easier uh, just by simply laying out everything in the order. So I start with the, the, the ones, the twos, the threes, and then I go into like washers and nuts uh, and all those kind of things. It's easy to find. And then down to the pins and the hosing, right? So that way you can see. Now I've already painted these. I taped them off and painted them the accent color. Here is the slew motor. Couple more braces, and then the teeth I painted up for the bucket, which is absolutely massive. Uh, so we're gonna keep on going. We're gonna be using the largest uh, of the rams right here. What's surprising is that the diameter isn't any larger than the other Komatsu version that they have. It's just a little bit longer. Here is a comparison. You can see the two side by side. Yes, I'm literally comparing lengths for you. According to the all-knowing book, I'm going to need the pin and then the, the uh, other side clamp, and then I'm going to need an M23 bolt. And I'll grab the pins that I need. There is two bags of these, so I'm going to have to make sure that's the right size. Might as well take both of them out. I'm sure I'll need them. And then if I just seat this right there. I can probably get that pin in on the other side. Let's see here if I just move these out of the way. I'm just going to undo the little holder that's right there. Once the pin is in place, then just get your bolt driver and drive a bolt in to hold that pin in location. So here it is with the zip ties uh, done the way they're requesting. The only thing I found surprising, and I'm probably going to slide a washer in here on either side or a shim, is that it does have a little bit of side-to-side -side play, but I don't see anywhere in the instructions where it says to put a shim in there, but I have a feeling it's supposed to. There are some extra washers around here, but I don't see anything that's going to go around that pin. All right, now that it is attached, it is time to introduce the hydraulic tubing. This is going to carry the oil from the lines to the actual ram itself. There is an in and an out, or a left and a right if you prefer, open and closed valves. Uh, and what I have to do is attach from here to here, and to here to here. And this is... Uh, you know, hydraulic oil tube. This has to maintain a lot of pressure, so it's very firm. You may find it's difficult to get onto the end of the nipple, uh, but if you heat it up, you can suck it right on. So a flame or a small heat gun, uh, hot wax is not uh, recommended. Kind of gets in there and bunches up. 
you don't want anything plugging up the holes. You can see there, it just goes around nice and easy. It's a perfect uh, fitment. Now what I need to do is take a collar and actually thread it on to the end of the nipple right here where you can see there is a thread. Here's the bag of collars. Just slide it right over the tip and go down the length of the shaft and then spin. You're all gonna laugh at this because you're gonna think I'm doing this just for the camera, but that's not so. This is so firm, what you need to do is kind of warm it up a little bit, but you don't want to uh, burn it. So just, you know, using the friction from your hands, then that way it makes it more pliable. When it's pliable, then heat up the tip, and that way you can suck right back onto this nipple. Okay, well, I made a promise to myself this year that if anything ever did go wrong in a build that I would show it on camera because, you know, it's part of the hobby experience, especially, you know, for everybody that's out there. And if you've, you know, saved a lot of money and tried to get a, a big project on the go, you know, you want to know of potential issues. Now, here's, an, I've never had this happen before. So here is uh, an inlet for this ram right here. You can see that I've had some work going on already. This inlet was actually brazed and pushed right in here, but it was on quite a downward angle, which is really interesting because this is supposed to be able to move up and down. And you can see that there is no movement up and down there because of that rigid hose. Now, when you go to move it, it actually moves that joint right, or it moves and it broke that braze, uh, and which case left me high and dry because I'm not a brazer, and I know that getting this to attach to that isn't going to be easy, so I'm going to have to learn how to braze right away. But for today's build, what could I do to bypass this issue? So heads up on this because I checked in here uh, as much as I could, and it even shows it's down on an angle. This is the coupling right here. It shows that it's down on an angle, which is very interesting because this, this, this whole ram is supposed to be able to move. So I know other people have uh, obviously done this before. Uh, they've built this machine before. If anybody's watching that's built it, let me know what you did to bypass this, or did you have to move this at all because it was an issue? Am I using the right one? I believe I am because it's identical to what I had in the picture right here. Here's that down piece on that slope. So I don't know how the heck they expected us to work around that. Everything looks right. Huh. All I have to do is reattach that, but I can't do it right now. Well, fucking son of a bitch, because that's a big pain in my ass. And for that much money, I would expect something a, a little bit stronger. But I think what really happened is the, the braze or the weld itself really wasn't that strong. So it just kind of started rounding out. And that's not a big deal, because I can call Lesu, or pardon me, I can, I can email Lesu, call them like in China. I can email them. Uh, and uh, I know that they've had pretty good customer service for me before, so... I'm sure that they'll be able to get me one of these out here. But for us, that totally sucks. But uh, what can I say? That's just the way of the road sometimes. Sometimes it works and sometimes it does not. And uh, if you go into the hobby with that in mind, you will always have a good time one way or another. Now, I'm not a big pussy, and I don't lay down when I'm in a battle. In fact, I'm a warrior and I continue to battle on. So what is the next step? Are we able to do this? Can we do this together? Let's see. So this one here is the next part of the boom right here. We'll let that JB Weld sit on there. <laughs> I know it is not going to work, but uh, that has been able to allow me to move it up a little bit out of the way. And I'm going to let that set. And, you know, it may work. We'll see by tomorrow. Uh, but regardless, we'll get a new ram in here one way or another. Moving on. So this one is going to need another ram. This one will be a little bit more straightforward and simple. Uh, it is the small one, which is right here. Still beautiful. Uh, and you know what? I've seen lots of RCs from lots of brands have lots of issues. And obviously, it may have been something that I have done. You know, I don't want to blame it on the manufacturer when a lot of the problems are ID10T problems or idiot problems, if you want to be more clear about that. Now, what do we see on this side? So we're going to be going down. We're going to need the pin on the side. Beautiful. Look at that. Line straight up with the other ones. Oh, I should have painted those ones brass or that gold color on the end. Well, that's okay, no big deal. And just slide that pin into place. Easier to do with two hands. 
and then put in the, um, the placement screw. That's going to keep it locked in. With that bolt in, it looks nice and flush. And you know what? There's less of a gap up here, so this one doesn't need a shim at all. That looks very nice. Okay, and then after it is mounted up, ba boom The massive bucket and the teeth get to go together. Okay, well thankfully between the start of this video and this point in the video, it has actually been about eight hours for me and I've already painted these two things and I've been building as I go. Okay, so after the ram is in place, uh, ba -boom, there it is, the massive bucket. Uh, looks like we're going to be putting all those teeth in place as, as well as the side cutters. Uh, so I'm going to need a lot of screws here and we're going to need these teeth. Uh, well, these teeth and that bucket. There we go. These are beautiful. Look at that. They're the size of my thumb. That's how long one of these bucket teeth are. You can see they're both shaped different, or they're shaped differently on both sides, so you can identify them easily. I think the only way I can give anybody some actual scale here, grab one of the cold ones from the fridge. Look at this. That's a full size, full size can of beer right there. If that gives you any kind of idea uh, uh, how big this bucket is. Full can, normal size. I didn't say it was good beer, I just said it was a can of beer. So the teeth will line up with this uh, rounded, uh, you know, like horseshoe shape going up. And they're just going to slide on like so. Slides on so it looks like Crazy Joe right there. Boom, Crazy Joe. <laughs> well, of course, that would be if he was missing all of his other teeth. Now here we go. This is what he's going to look like when he's like 70, right? That's what I'll have as a grill when I'm 70. So I need M210. So because I laid them out easy to see, M210 is right there. Washer and special nut, okay? So the special nuts are right here. What makes them so special? You'll actually see that they're quite elongated. And then we're going to need the washers. Okay, let's see if it can hold a king can. Oh, yeah! So it is exactly the width of a king can. How many could I get in there? A few of them. You could, you could bring like three of them over to the site easily. And then I take the screws and I lay them through the bottom. Everyone will be like, drink the, drink the beer, drink the beer. And you guys don't, actually this whole time, I don't drink. People will be like, well, now you've, you've got a drinking problem. Why don't you drink? And <laughs> actually I take medication that doesn't allow me to drink. And I would say that is my biggest problem. And then these four beautiful side cutters. These are painted, even though they are brass. And these teeth slide on opposite of each other and just line up with the two holes that are there. Then you're going to be using the longer 2.8 uh, or, or the M2s and to slide them through each one with a nut on either side. Now that is what I'm talking about. That looks fantastic. You just don't get the size of it until you're here in person. Okay, that is looking very tasty indeed. Very strong, very large, lots of power. So, <laughs> Next up, we've got the ring. Okay, so this is going to go on top of the slew ring itself. This is actually going to be the motor uh, holder. So we're going to put that on before the motor goes on. Gotcha. Okay, well, that's no problem. That's this piece right here. And this is going to be going with the track wires, the track motor wires straight through the center. 
So somebody asked me, how heavy is this going to be once it is 100% completed with the hydraulic oil in there, as well as the battery? And I'm going to estimate close to 75 pounds. There we go. Just lining up that round plate with the screw holes and the motor plate. Here's what I was seeing, looking down, trying to line that stuff up. Of course, I have it all lined up now. So this is where the motor is going to go uh, against the teeth there. Where is that motor? You can see it right here with the pinion on the end. Ta-da! That is going to fit in there, but I'm not going to do that right this second. I still have to get all these bolts all the way uh, around done up. Okay, so now all the bolts are done up, and I have these two leads from either track motor. On each ESC on the bottom, if you remember I mentioned they're here on the bottom, they have those motor leads already pre-soldered up for air soldered or whatever you want to pronounce it as wherever you're at. So all you need to do is to take each set of track motors and plug them, the male end into the female end, to join them up. Do that with each track motor on each bottom ESC. I caught myself in my own video making a huge mistake at the beginning. This is actually three brushless ESCs. They're brushless motors in the, in the front track motors. That, the way I can tell that is by the three wires that are here. So brushless motors in the tracks, my mistake. Uh, so that, well, another question somebody will have is how do you know which wire goes into which plug? And you know, because they're different colors, you'll notice one is red and yellow and the other is orange and yellow. Uh, this one probably here, what is this, black? Yeah, black goes to the blue. If you find your track motor is actually going in the wrong direction, just change any two of these around and it'll switch the direction of the motor. That's the beauty about brushless motors that are sensorless, just like that. Here's a perfect example of what I mean. You can see these next ones on the other ESC were orange, green, and brown, when really you could just kind of hook it up the way you want, see which direction the track goes, and then switch it around. So I have not plugged in a receiver yet. I have not hooked up the power to these ESCs. I've only plugged in uh, these two leads to the track motors. Now I can take this transmission and motor and put it in place, making sure to slide the leads to the brushed motor. Ah! In brushed motor you can tell because there's only two leads, which is a positive and negative. I'm going to go under this center bracket and mount it up with the screws provided. M26, now are they going to be bolts or are they going to be screws? I'm going to go with the thinking they're going to be screw heads. And they are. Winner! Okay, and then the, this piece that I painted slides in right there and gets two bolts, one here and one there. Looks so awesome. So then this is what we are left with. So we are moving on now. We're going to start putting in the main boom. There is the hinge point right here, straight through to this side. Which pin is it going to be? It says it's going to be... L39, L39 is going to be 86 mils long, L39. Hello. And greasy shaft might be hard to hold on to, but extra lube is going to be worth it if things get wet. So make sure you've got the direction proper so when you stick it through the hole, the proper tip is sticking out on the other side. When you slide it in, if there's anything sticky left over, just make sure to give it a good wipe. You know you have the right ram because you can see the large diameter hole on the other side. It's going to fit in there so nicely. And from previous experience, I know which way to put the ram in because you want to keep the pipes to the inside so when it actually goes down and flexes a little bit, it's not actually running and interrupting anything. So the boom is sticking straight up in the air, uh, quite erect I would say. This was making it easy for me to get in and to stick the pin through the slot, uh, allowing this uh, ram to be uh, um, well secured in place. But I also noticed this has a little bit of slop on either side too. It's almost like it could use some plastic shims on either side that would help it uh, help it move easy, but maybe maybe it's not such a big deal. Maybe I'm just thinking it is, but it's not. So let's go here. This is the second one. The second one would slide in just like this. Perfect. 
Two at the same time. Well, almost. To insert that uh, uh, locking screw, it's best just to lift one of the rams up. Uh, that way you have clear access to the hole. I'm going to use a longer driver here. And then just kind of gently work your way in. You don't want to be forcing anything. You'll notice I haven't used a drill. Everything is hand turned for a reason. There, not over tight, just tight enough. And then on the other side, very awkward positioning. I'm very lucky I've got a small uh, bit right here ta -da, that I can actually remove from this, but I got this a long time ago on some RC four wheel drive uh, um, bead locks, I think it was. That way I can use an Allen key. It's kind of like a very, very small socket. I wish I could tell you where to get one. Hey, L37, the fattest pin on the block. And then there was a small plate I put on here, kind of like a cap that gets three bolts. And this is basically what attaches uh, the end of that bolt uh, to these two rams, one on either side, of course. And then, no and then. Okay, then the next page says I'm going to need L41 and L42. And these are going to have these brackets and this piece on here for the shovel. Yeah, but it wants me to do a whole bunch of hose first. Hmm. Do I do the shovel or do I do the hose? Ah, frig it. Take this pin. Okay, so here you can see I've run the pin all the way through to the other side of the arm. Now what I need to do is take a small piece and pin the pin in place. Now this piece will come into play. A lot of people may have been wondering what this was for, but this is actually to help the action of the bucket. As you can see, it fits into the end of the ram with these two long arms with the pins that go through on either side, two straight pins. These pins are right here. Okay, so how it attaches is pretty straightforward. The pin comes in through this side, goes through this little swing arm that I painted earlier. Make sure the direction is right. Goes straight through the center of that last ram through to the other side, and then again with one of these uh, pin um, stops right here. It locks it in place. Then what you want to do is you want to take it to the other side and do the same thing. Run the other pin straight through and then lock it with another one of these screws on this. Okay, once that's locked in place, then you take the bucket with the two pins that are left and you slide it through the two holes that are left. Here's the two pins. All right, well, I'm going to leave it there, my friends. I have a ton of work to go still, but look at this. The main boom is on. The arm is now on. Look at this, and it does it no justice at all. That's why I put the beer cans in here, like <laughs> no justice whatsoever. Look at this, all the way around. So I still have electronics to do. You guys make some noise in the comments section if you want me to show you the electronics on camera or if you want me just to string uh, all the electronics myself, I can do that uh, and then just kind of catch you guys up to speed. I want to know, let me know your opinion in the comments section down below. Are you advanced enough that you already know the electronics and don't really care? Uh, you know, because I can go ahead and do this on my own. I am going to do all the hoses on my own. Uh, I normally know it's a team effort, but at the same time, I feel more accomplished when I can get multiple hoses done uh, in a day. And uh, I hope you guys have had a good time watching today's video. I don't have all the pieces on yet. I still got to put the top plate on. The back piece, uh, the back weight has to go on. And yes, of course, look at this. 
I hand painted it. I know some of you guys are noticing it already, but this is the back weight and the cat plate that is painted red and gold to match with the rest of it. Guys, hopefully I earned a like click from you today. This was a hell of a lot more work than I'd like to admit. Normally people take like a year to build these things and I am enjoying it as quickly as possible. Look at this. All the accent pieces on it are really starting to come together. I'm really starting to get a good idea of what this is going to look like. And man, this is going to move some pay dirt. Guys, we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside, have fun with RC, or if you're like me, heck, stay inside and build one.